So we're going to start it off right now. We're just going to go right into honor and curse number four. Um, picked it, I actually just got to read it today. And a lot of people, I don't, I don't hear the amount of buzz I do that you hear for Knights of the Golden Sun as I do for Honor and Curse. And I think it's really misplaced because this book has been phenomenal. And number four itself, um, classic, classic. It's like, dude, if Mulan had like freaking magic powers and like, freaking kung fu panda mulan but it, and then just started kicking ass great story um, i actually read the advanced issue for number five number five gets even better honor and curse number four jack what are your thoughts first thing is i'll say absolute standout cover um you, and whether or not you're a fan of the art style or not you have to admit that that cover stands out on a shelf right and um, that's um get- nicholas salamanca Right. right, who does amazing covers for Honor and Curse. Um, you know, Mauricio Villanreal with uh, um, Knights of the Golden Sun and who did our Honor and Curse variant. He's gotten a lot of attention, but um, I think, I'm not even going to try to pronounce who you just said, but uh, has done an amazing job with these Honor and Curse covers. I agree with what Brian said. The, the buzz isn't bigger for Honor and Curse within the speculation community. But I'll note that if you think back again to plug the indie spotlight series show to our premiere episode with chris sanchez chris sanchez mentioned that like and sales for honor and curse were brisker they were um stronger and uh there was a higher demand for honor and curse upon initial release than there was knights of the golden sun i think people have almost what hurt honor and curse is releasing kind of simultaneously with knights of the golden sun because speculators focus was on that but if you've read the two stories and you look at them, which one of the two feels more adaptable to you? I, now, I love Knights of the Golden Sun. I'm not saying anything bad about that. I'm just saying Honor and Curse, for a speculator, actually is probably a better play. Chris also hinted that there's some Hollywood talk going on. He couldn't really go into it, but he, he <coughs> just, he just kind of dropped that hint out there. And, uh, you know, myself, Brian, Andy, we don't know anything. I'll tell you that right now. We don't know anything. But we have had heavy discussions between us about what could be the play from Mad Cave. And you just got to look at it with kind of an intelligent eye. If, if Mad Cave was going to do a deal with Hollywood, it would probably be Honor and Curse. It, it's been strongly reviewed. I mean, incredibly strongly reviewed. It, it plays on to the movie screen. The story is kind of one of those stories that is kind of hot in Hollywood, that style. They're looking for that kind of stuff. So... Um, I think Honor and Curse is a major sleeper from a speculation perspective. But it's on the reader buzz section because exactly what Brian said. People who read this book love this book. Right. So with that, speaking of Knights of the Golden Sun, issue number seven came out this week, which wraps up the first. They're doing a trilogy for this, right? So it wraps up the first arc right. for the trilogy. Uh, as we mentioned, Nicholas Salamanca on the art for Honor and Curse, Mauricio Villarreal. Via Real for Knights of the Golden Sun, both fantastic artists. Both books written by Mark London, fantastic. Um, there I go again. I like to use the word fantastic, but Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, if anybody ever, if anybody ever does fan art for this, that's what we need. We need Brian as Mr. Fantastic. But what are your thoughts, Knights of the Golden Sun? I haven't had a chance to read this issue yet. I do have it picked up though. I haven't had a chance to read it yet either, but I can't wait to read it. Um, and this was maybe my most anticipated read of the week, something that I was really looking forward to. Um, this is a story I didn't – honestly, it's not my type of story, so I didn't think I would enjoy it. Um, Brian and Andy kind of hammered me down on this one, just constantly talking about it. Um, again, I'm a guy who – everybody's going to hate me for this, Brian. This I've never seen an episode of Game of Thrones. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I'm not into the, like, the kind of medieval – um, I call it old timey, yeah. but, uh, you know, those, those kind of like period piece type things, the fantasy element. Well, um, so it, let me tell you, if you're going to start, start with season eight and then go backwards. Cause then you'll just get more excited instead of let down when you get to the end. <laughs> I keep telling Brian, eventually I'm going to watch it, but, um, yeah. So, so I didn't think I would like this series. And, and when the other guys were reading, I think it was issue three. I finally read issue one. And I actually, the first book, time I ever read this book, I read the CBSI variant that I got as a comp copy. Um, that was the first thing that I read, the book, literally the book on the wall behind me. Um, and I, I, from the first time I read the first book, I was hooked. 
it, this book has really defined Reader Buzz. I think out of seven issues, it's probably been in the Reader Buzz category five times. Um, I'd love to go back and look and actually see that. But you look at how many of these issues have become 10 to $15 books, the majority of them, probably the same ratio. Um, and I think that I trust Mark London to wrap this story up better than apparently you guys feel about um, Game of Thrones. And, uh, and you know, while, yes, it's a trilogy, this kind of will complete this story, this arc. And, you know, I I'm really excited to read this book. Uh, I think Mark London, you know, he... He's known as the owner of Mad Cave, the founder of Mad Cave, but man, is this guy a talented writer. The way he, he brings you into a story. I really enjoyed Knights of the Golden Sun and Honor and Curse. I know a lot of people, um, you know, they gave us heat early on because we produced, obviously, two variants with them. But again, something you will learn, you may, you may doubt us now, but you will learn over time, whether it's me and Brian through Simple Ones Comics or through, especially through CBSI, the home base, uh, with uh, CBSI owner Ben C., uh, who I can't say enough about. Um, anything that we do, we're going to do with integrity. We're going to do with people that we know are bringing quality product. And that's what you saw with these Mark London releases, just absolutely amazing. And I'll go ahead and throw a teaser out. It's probably not the last time you're going to see something with CBSI and Mad Cave. So be on the lookout for that.